Okay, hi. Who have we got here? Hi, everyone. Hi, Noel. Hi, Gregor. Let me just put on the sound. Hi, Alexandra. Let me see. I'm still getting to grips with this Zoom myself. Let's see if I can put on the sound. Okay. Okay. So, where are you all from? I'm dying to hear. Great. Oh, oh cool. And um, I think Alexandra's from San Francisco too. Cool. And Noel, where are you from? Well, maybe I've got some chat on. Awesome. Okay, so welcome and thanks for uh, thanks for coming today. I'm so excited that you could join me again. Oh, hi. Oh, you're welcome. We want to get you hired. <laughs> okay, right. So it looks like we have everyone here, which is great. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, introduce myself. In fact, were you here yesterday for the introduction? I think all of you were. Or maybe not. What I'll do is I'm going to share my screen with you and then I'll run through uh, the introduction and, and then we'll, we'll dive into the workshop. Okay, today's theme is LinkedIn. So I'm going to show you how to become a LinkedIn all-star. Okay, right, I'm going to kick this one off. Let me just share my screen with you. Okay, so welcome again to the uh, powerful UX portfolio free workshop uh, for ambitious creatives who want to transition to user experience design and get the jobs everyone wants, but aren't quite sure how to ask for. Okay. So what the program that I'm, I'm going to share with you, part of it, uh, which is today, day, day two workshop today, is really a, a whole system to show you how you can go from no job offers in user experience to hired within 26 days. Now I know this is possible because I've been trialing it with my beta students and the first one to get a job was Ben and he got hired within 26 days and he transitioned from um, experience um, from user interface design um, he'd done about 18 months um, in user experience training hi Ronnie how's it going awesome nice one <laughs> okay so this program's for you really even if you've taken an expensive online course and it hasn't worked out for you yet even if you've got a portfolio with maybe no achievements displayed in it yet, but you've got work that you've done within the design, within a design field and you've got commercial experience. Um, this program's also for you if you've applied endlessly via online application forms and you haven't heard anything back. Um, this program's also for you, even if you think user, um, user experience employers only high PhDs and UX masters. And if you're not a UX master yet or um, any master just yet. Okay. So, who am I and what keeps me going? So, my name's Louise Campbell, and I'm a user experience designer, and I specialize in working with e commerce companies, including some of the ones on this page here. Um, I've worked at Netta Porter, Mr. Porter, The Body Shop, Greyhound, and also Bloomberg and Springer Nature, and some other companies there too. So, 
what really keeps me going? Oh, let me just dive into what this looks like from the top. So um, many of you ask me, I really want to get experience from the top. I want to know what it looks like at the top as far as working in the user experience design team. So I want to give you a little overview of the kind of metrics that you might be looking at when you go and work for some of these bigger companies. So Netta Porter, for example, has around 6 million readers a month. Um, that's just for its online magazines. It also has around 85 million page views a month. It has a highly engaged audience. The average age of the customer is, I guess, around 38. And then they also have um, the average household income. Um, they've also got a huge social media following and they've also got an average spend on fashion of around 22,000 a year. So this gives you the idea of the kind of volumes of customers that you'll be um, dealing with, and also the metrics are very important. So when you work in user experience design, the metrics are the most important thing, as part, apart from the customers, obviously, but these are the kind of metrics that you'll be tracking. So this is what it looks like from the top, and this is why I wanted to share it with you today. Okay. So what does, um, for example, Greyhound, I've also worked with them on designing the, the checkout purchase path. Um, they, their transactions are around um, nearly a billion a year. And also, oh, hi there. Hi. Okay. And they carry around 18 million passengers a year. So these are the kind of transactions you'll be looking at when you go in and work for a big company, especially in e-commerce. Okay, so what else keeps me going? So I've been running the beta program now for eight weeks. And honestly, the students in my program are amazing and they really keep, they're really keeping me on my toes and keeping me, um, keeping me going. So we have Ben here who got hired within 26 days. Um, he was struggling. He was at, he'd actually got interviews, but he was actually struggling to get through the interview stage. So what we helped him do on the program, what I helped him do was really deliver a very structured portfolio and show him how to engage with hiring managers and then also get through the interview stage. Um, I've also helped um, Max, graphic designer, get interviews and also get local contracts. And Kerry, she's a, she was an office manager, but she'd been studying user experience research on the side for the last 18 months. So she was, um, she knew her stuff, but she was struggling to get interviews. So what I've helped Kerry do is position herself to be in a strong position to get hired. Um, and one of the, one of the tactics that we used was to um, get her to do a talk with a local at a local meetup. Now this is a great way to get known in your circle and it doesn't matter if you're just starting out because what you'll find is the user experience community is extremely welcoming and if you've got something that you want to share with them then getting um, a spot at a local open mic night to discuss something you're working on is a really great way to get known and also pick up potential job opportunities and be the first to know about them. So that's the way Kerry got um, three interviews lined up with local companies. Um, Chris, he, he's um, a user experience designer. He was a front-end web developer initially and he took advantage of my free material and within one month he got an offer with a charity in London and he is extremely happy working with his charity. He got, I think he was, working in advertising and he wasn't finding that very rewarding and he was wanted to move into working for a charitable user experience organization and um, he found that was very very rewarding okay so if you join the program uh, the powerful ux portfolio program what you'll be invited to join also for support is our WhatsApp group. So we've got a really vibrant, supportive WhatsApp group. And there we share our um, weekly wins. Um, also, Friday's a big day. So what we do is we set the goals for the week on Monday. And then during the week, 
I act as an anchor and support everyone in the group to make sure that they're reaching their goals. But if they're struggling, then I also want to, I use the WhatsApp group to really reach out and find out where you're at and um, how I can help you reach your Friday goals. Okay, so what is the Powerful UX Portfolio System? It's actually a four week program and it's made up of four modules. The first module, which we covered yesterday was Mindset. The second one is LinkedIn, which is your most, one of your most powerful tools for getting hired. Um, the third one is Dream Boss, where to find him or her. Um, and the fourth one is Brand You, the actual job application. So you'll hear me talk about this a lot. It's called the Superstar, um, superstar Narrative or the Superstar Application Material. Um, you'll also have heard this talked about online and you may have wondered what it is. So I cover that in detail. Um, we also cover on the programme interviews and negotiation because I find this a crucial step and it's often left out. So, and especially as a user experience designer, your portfolio is key in your negotiation. And that's what we cover during the programmes, how to use your portfolio as a negotiating tool for salary and beyond. Okay, so what else keeps me going? My daughters, so there's Kira and there's Franzi. I do have a long suffering husband, but we won't talk about him right now. <laughs> okay, so the big picture, your portfolio is just one step of the hiring process. So we cover the other steps to increase your chances of getting a job offer. Because when hiring managers look at you, they're looking at the whole picture. They're looking at the way you've written your LinkedIn profile. They're also looking at the way you've structured your cover letter and also your portfolio. Does your portfolio and your cover letter talk about the same narrative? And does your cover letter also support your CV? And does your cover letter also support the hiring manager's needs? So we look at the way they all work together to make sure that you are um, presenting a strong candidate. So today is all about your LinkedIn profile. Okay, so how to create, this is module two. Um, you'll see 66K um, user experience design job on here. That was the beta program name. It's actually called Powerful UX Portfolio. So if you see that, just ignore it for now. Okay, so create a LinkedIn all-star profile. I'm just gonna switch screens now. Okay, so similar to yesterday, what I'd like to do is run through this. I'm just going to run through the slides very quickly. We probably won't cover the whole um, module. So what I'd like to do is just run through the basics and then please feel free to ask any questions in chat. Uh, and more than how more than um, I'm really excited to answer all your questions. Okay. Oh, yes. And then I've got something really exciting at the end. And that is um, a one script which you can use now to actually reach out to hiring managers and start to build a conversation with them because i think that's very important just a um a general script that you can write to them that you can send either on linkedin mail or linkedin something which will start a conversation because it's all about starting conversations okay okay just loading okay so this is module two create a LinkedIn all-star profile sorry I've got something on my screen I'm just trying to move it okay okay so I want you to use UX in your byline but I want you to use it in a smart way because the minute you add UX to your byline, you will start getting hiring managers getting in contact with you. But I want you to make sure that it's, um, so for example, Ronnie here, he did it a great way. He put something like uh, user interface designer with a passion for UX, which is brilliant because he's not saying, hey, I'm 100% qualified UX designer, but I have got a passion for this subject and I'm 
um, and extremely interested and that will get you noticed and if you're also networking really extensively while you're looking for UX work then you will catch hiring managers attention whether you're on LinkedIn with a with a byline which says UX or not so not only do you have to be on LinkedIn but you should be networking within your local UX communities as well so here are some interesting ways that people have done that. So you can see here, Carmen Talahoy has put developing UX designer in her byline. That's quite clever. Um, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. You've also got, here we have a mixture. So we've got UX web designer and front end developer. That's definitely quite a mix. Um, I can't really see where her focus is, but you can, that, that's fine, that's not for me to kind of judge. Um, we've got, what else have we got here? Freelance UX UI, obviously that's an extremely popular byline. But perhaps if you're starting out in UX or either user research, uh, so, so Alexandra, I know you are, perhaps you could put something like um, associate, a user experience researcher. And that, because, that, because I know you come from a PhD background and, and you know, you're, you've got a lot of experience on the research side and you want to move into user experience. So perhaps if you haven't done that already, that might be a good way to start, um, you know, stimulating some hiring manager inquiries and also um, start building a conversation with local companies about their uh, researcher needs. Okay. Um, Let's have a look at some of the others. Okay, UX CX service design freelance. Okay. Again, I think the reason why Goldman has included all those particular um, state um, abbreviations in his um, in his byline is because he's he's he wants to catch hiring managers' eyes who are who are maybe looking for that particular keyword in search. Okay? All right. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, here are some considerations to um, use on your byline. Obviously, your name and then perhaps you've got your actual title that you want to be hired for. So, Associate User Experience Researcher. And then you might want to put in something around, around the company that you work for. So perhaps you specialize in surgical tooling or something like that. Um, so here are some examples that you can use. Okay, so LinkedIn. Hiring managers spend about 50 seconds on your profile. And it, so it needs to be good. And what I would like you to do is include a summary. It's very important. And I want you to include as many keyword, keywords within your field of specialization within that area. So things, words like wireframing, prototyping, research, so that hiring managers can actually find you because they'll use all these UX keywords to search out particular candidates, okay? But I want you to do what feel, feels comfortable. So I don't want you to put anything in there which you can't do. Um, but keep it focused on user experience design or user research and any um, user interface design related skills as well. I want you to really think about your summary because it's there to highlight your strengths. So if you've worked on huge multi million pound projects, I want you to put them in there um, because. There's one thing I'm going to talk about further on, and that's about A players. So you'll hear me talk about this phrase quite a lot. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit further on, a bit further on in this presentation. But you want to be singing your strengths, focusing on your strengths, and focusing on the wins that you've brought to companies. So even if it's not in the millions, let's say it's just in the um, hundreds of thousands, or perhaps you've increased engagement by two or three hundred percent on a project, I want you to put them in there and I want you to put them at the top. So I want you to lead with your results at every stage of the hiring process, and especially on your LinkedIn summary. 
I also want you to remove the words I, okay, and me and my. You're going to be working with teams in the future and it's all about we and together and us. So I want you to see if you can banish the word I from any of your material, your um, superstar application material. So that includes your LinkedIn profile, your CV, your cover letters. It's all about we together and us. Okay. Okay. So again, rock your successes in your summary. So like I said, or like I mentioned, increase perhaps you've increased traffic by 25% for a particular company, or you've increased sales by 300%. Perhaps you've increased engagement by 40%, or perhaps you've saved a company that you've worked for in the past thousands of dollars because you identified um, something which could be optimized better or designed in a more optimal way. So I really want you to go through your work history and I want you to look at ways that you've helped companies either make money or save money. And I want you to, in all your um, self-promotional marketing material, I want you to actually lead with that information. This is really important. Okay, so building a cohesive narrative about who you are is probably one of the most important things you can do when you're looking for when you're looking for work. So. Like I said, my name's Louise and I specialize in e-commerce e applications. And when I talk to hiring managers, I have a whole narrative around how I've helped companies um, and the successes that I've helped them achieve. So I want you to look at building a narrative around your particular um, expertise. And it could be in uh, digital publishing or it could be in e-commerce or it could be from uh, user researching in a particular field. I want you to really uh, focus on your strengths. Okay, so another thing about your um, LinkedIn profile is that your work history needs to flow nicely from one job to the next. If it looks a bit eclectic, you need to look at clever ways to streamline that narrative. And it needs to act in your favour as well. Because I've noticed um, many people have, you know, in, in one project, they might have been um, a project manager working on, on a boat. And then in the next um, title, they are an office manager. And then in the next title, they're a user researcher. So you, you need to be taken seriously and your career needs to show, show some progression. So if you can streamline that narrative in your favor towards design or product management, uh, UX design or product management related career, then you will, be, um, you will be winning with hiring managers. They will take you seriously and also team leads. So what is an example of a cohesive narrative? So for example, perhaps you started off as a, I actually took this from someone's uh, LinkedIn profile because I thought it was a great, um, a great cohesive narrative. He started out as a multimedia design assistant. So for you, you could perhaps have started out as a research assistant on a project and also all you have to do is put research assistant there. Perhaps you've, um, perhaps then you moved into a more technical role. So if you can see here, he moved into a junior web development role. Then he moved into a designer role is actually promoted from within the company. And then from web designer, he went into user experience design. So it's a nice flow. There are no gaps. You can see how he's also been promoted from within companies and that's quite important. Um, I also want to talk to you about that. So what that means is perhaps you're doing a sideways transition from one career to the next. If you can use the strengths you have to work um, your um, key strengths into a new position within a technology company, 
It might not be user experience design to start off with. It might be web development or it might be a user interface design. But if that company has a strong UX department, you can always transition in that way. So I encourage you to use your strengths to get hired. Um, if you can go straight into a UX design position, that's fantastic. But if you can't, then I encourage you to use your strengths to do a sideways transition. Okay, so there is a caveat to this rule. What if you've been in the same job for years? It's okay, but what you need to do is move the focus away from your, your needs and look at what potential hiring teams are looking for. So if you don't have any idea, then you should definitely go and find out. So Ronnie, this is actually something I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, Cause Ronnie's got, Ronnie had to prepare a cover letter and CV. He's been asked to apply for a couple of roles. And um, Ronnie, I, want, I just wanted to make sure that you got in contact. Um, I wanted to make sure that you got in contact with the hiring team um, before you sent off your cover letter, even if it was just for a quick chat. Did you have time to do that? Because sometimes um, companies are oh, right. Okay, have you had um, have you had a chance to prepare your cover letters? All oh, right. Okay. Okay. And um, do you know what their um, requirements are outside the job specification? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Because you're going to use that in your cover letter. You're going to use that extra ammunition about what they're looking for. All right. Okay, cool. Glad you got that out of the way. Right. Okay. So that's right. You need to use your loyalty if you've been with the same company as a big asset to the company you're going into because loyalty counts for a lot. And I want you to look at ways that you can really build that into your narrative. You're loyal, you're hardworking, and you're there to match their needs, okay? Oops, sorry. Oh no, my chat box has got stuck in front of, oh, well, let's, let's see if this arrow, arrow button works. No, no. Sorry about this. <laughs> Okay, sorry, chat box moved. Right, next screen. All right, so this is my Bible, okay? It's called um, The Who, or it's called Who, Solve Your Number One Hiring Problem. Um, it's like the A-list company hiring Bible, and it's by, it's, it's by Jeff, Jeff Smart or something. It's just called Who. Anyway, it, it basically outlines the A-player hiring process. So if you want to go and work at Google and Facebook and uh, Uber, these A-list companies, then you have to read this book because this is basically, it, it gives you all the tips, um, it gives you all the insider information, um, how to present yourself, um, how to get hired at, at, at these big companies. So it, it shows you how they actually qualify candidates. And it's, it's an amazing insight and um, you, you have to read it. It's very, it's very testosterone driven, I have to say. But I think it's good to know these rules. I think you need to understand them. So this book actually presents it brilliantly. And um, I mean, I came away from it feeling slightly inadequate, but I think it's good to know these rules and it's good to know that they exist because hiring obviously is a game and you need to know the rules and you will learn the rules if you read this book. So I'm recommending you get this and you have a read. Okay. 
He's also got a YouTube channel as well, this guy. Um, and he's uh, extremely smart and it's a great read. Okay, so the next thing we're going to cover is, um, I'm going to just skip through this. It's called um, the job discovery part and it's how to conduct deep research on each job that you're going for. Um, because I want you to understand the job that you're going for before you apply. And the way to do that really is to do some research around the best technology companies to work for, because you don't want to work for just anyone. And I also realized that, you know, applying to Googles and Facebooks when you're starting out is perhaps um, is going to be tough because you have to get your, ex your hiring experience, your interview experience with maybe um, companies, um, what I call B and C list companies, first of all. Um, so I want you to go and find out, do some research who the best companies to work for in your area. You can do a quick search on LinkedIn for that, uh, sorry, on Google for that. Okay, somebody's got their mic on. Let me just, uh... okay. All right, so I want you to create a dream list, all right? And I want you to split that into three. I want you to list out your A-list companies, your B-list and your C-list. And this is really important. And I want you to start doing this now. Um, and the reason I want you to do this is because companies are split into, very, into three different areas for a reason. And that's usually by how difficult they, they are to get into. Um, the A-list companies are obviously the most popular ones because career progression and usually their offices are amazing. And you'll also work with the best and learn a great deal. B-list companies are really great to develop your skills up at on the way. And C-list companies are also great to try out your interview skills on and also to see what works for you with an interview environment and not. And you also don't risk losing face in front of, in front of um, C-list companies as you would um, risk losing face, let's say, if you went to a, um, a, a and sorry, yeah, so start off at the C-list companies, practice your skills as far as your interviewing skills and getting hired skills, because once you interview at an A-list company and you fail, you will be on their books as failing the interview. Now, the other thing that I want to run past all of you today is that you are, you are in control of the hiring process. I know it sounds like other companies are, but actually you are. And if you didn't get hired by a B, uh, an A, B or C list company, it was something that you did along the way, which didn't get you hired. Okay. So what this, um, discovery process does or this job discovery process does is it really allows you to see um, where you might be going wrong within the hiring process and I'm going to teach you the hiring process the whole way along but what you want to do is really practice your skills when you're starting out in the C-list companies and slowly work, work your way up to A-list. If you start working in C-list companies now you could be working for A-list within two years that's quite possible. Okay. All right. So I've got five more minutes um, and then we'll zoom on to questions. Okay. So if you possibly can, when you're starting out, I would avoid going to work for startups. And that's because you want to get the, you want to work with the best teams and they're not necessarily at startups. Also, if you're just starting out in your career, a startup's the absolute worst place for you right now. But saying that, I know lots of startups want researchers to go and work for them. So if you are a uh, associate researcher and a startup asks you to go and do some research for them, go ahead. It's the best place to start. Um, you can also build up your portfolio and build up your skills and um, you can also develop a great reputation among startups for stopping them making some horrendous mistakes. So 
I would only go and work for a startup, perhaps on a contractual basis, if I was a researcher and I was looking to find companies uh, to work with. Um, but otherwise, apart from that, I would try and avoid them because you want to hone your skills as a user experience designer. And really that comes with working with other user experience designer within a team framework of, let's say, developers, user interface designers, etc. Okay. This is a great article. So um, one, of my, one of my design heroes is uh, Mike Montiero. And he wrote this fantastic article. Um, he's got a great blog. It's called Dear Design Student. And um, the article is eight reasons to turn down that startup job. And it, he's very funny and very dry. And I think you'll like him a lot. So you should definitely take a read of that article. Um, and try and avoid startups if you can. All right, I'm gonna do one more slide and then I'm gonna hand, um, hand it over to you to uh, Zoom group chat. Okay, so one more slide. There are, oh, let me see, two different types of companies that you would want to go and work for. One is client side. So they're like Google, Zalando, Facebook, ASOS. These are big, client side companies with many internal UX project, uh, products to work on, but you'll be working for one company. Lots of interesting projects um, and great career progression. The flip side of that is agency side UX, which is um, a design agency. Perhaps they have many clients and a high variety of different UX jobs to work on. These are really great. Agency side is fantastic if you're starting out in your UX career and you want to get a good variety of work by some big name clients in your portfolio. I highly recommend this route. Uh, you'll find many service user experience design agencies. Um, and I think, um, yeah, so again, agency side, many clients, good good place to focus on finding work when you're starting out in UX. I highly recommend it. There's um, a website called Awards and I would definitely um, go bookmark this website. They cover the best agencies in um, London. I think these ones are in London, but you can also find them. Uh, I think they've got a New York section. If you just type in top UX design agencies. Okay. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna round up or escape from this, this screen. Go back into this screen and then, right, okay. So I want to um, hand, hand it over to you guys. Do you have any questions for me? If you want to leave your questions in group chat, um, I'm more than happy to answer them. And while you're doing that, I'm going to just open up the special offer, which I know some of you know about. But it's really, this week is what I call my um, launch week. And I'm launching, um, on Monday, I launch Powerful UX Portfolio, the four-week, five-module program. And... I've only got, I've got 16 places left. So this was from yesterday. I sold four places yesterday and I know these are going to be gone by the end of the week. So the sooner you get in there, the better, hopefully. Um, the actual final price is, uh, was 597, but for everybody that attended the workshop, I'm doing a special offer price for you of 279. Okay, so be quick. And do make sure that you take advantage of that. Right, let me see, I've got some questions coming in. Okay. Were you saying, oh, sorry, Alexander, how do you get around the problem of needing visual portfolio pieces as a researcher? Seems that everyone wants to see nice UI. Okay, so, Kerry, who was on our program, well, she still is on our program, 
she built a research piece for her portfolio and it didn't have anything to do with UI. So it was, um, I can put you in touch with her actually. Um, and she can share her portfolio with you, all right? Because she did, um, she actually did a work project. She was working at a very busy um, um, medical specialist office in New York. She's managing a big office with lots of medical equipment and they needed some new tracking procedures. And basically what she did is she built a case study and she did a ton of research around how to improve the flow of um, equipment in and out of the office and around New York. And she then, uh, she researched, she, she followed, you know, the user centered design process as far as research goes. And she built a, just one case study based on that. Uh, she did build a clickable prototype, but it was just um, a basic UI. It was no fancy, no fancy design. And she presented that at the New York Researchers Meetup. And she got um, inquiries to apply for associate researchers role just by putting one case study in her portfolio and presenting to a group of um, uh, special, um, researchers at a meetup. Not just any researchers, it's the New York Researchers Meetup, which has an amazing audience. So I suggest that perhaps you could put a research project together that you've done. I'll put you in touch with Kerry and perhaps she could help you create something which you could then present in San Francisco. Um, I'm going to let you into a little tip as well. Um, at the beginning and the end of the uh, presentation that she did, she said that she was a research student looking for work opportunities in New York. And she left her number and her email address and people got in contact with her. So it, we'll make sure if you're presenting in public always to leave your details on the slide at the beginning and the slide at the end so that people can get in touch with you. And if you're looking for work, I, I honestly believe people want to help you. Um, if you let people know what you want as well, that's very important. So let them know what you're looking for and people will go out of their way to help you if they like you, okay? All right, so Gregor, is, Gregor asks, um, were you saying earlier that one should put one's own name in the LinkedIn byline? Oh, no, okay, <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. Sorry, it looks, it looks a bit awkward, I'm gonna change that. Basically, you put um, your name where it should go and then you put your job title in the, in the byline. Sorry about that, it was a bit confusing, I'm gonna change that. Okay. Next one, Ionis Ferris question. If you have several UX projects, is it better to have small descriptions, large descriptions? Okay, so you need one long form portfolio piece with the whole project, okay? So I want you to include everything, so that means pictures of the team you worked with, um, uh, all the research that you did, perhaps all the um, scamps that were drawn, include any interaction design, um, include the success using the STAR framework. I've actually got a link to the STAR framework somewhere. Um, actually, if you head over, so I've got a, a private Facebook group called Portfolio Rockstars, Come and join me over there and I'll send you a link to the STAR framework, which will help you um, lay out your case study in your portfolio. But you should have one long form piece and then you should have um, some short, shorter one, shorter um, PDF that you send out to prospective clients. And that should just be a summary of the results from the project. So you need one long form one, um, and then one short form one to send out to prospective clients. Some prospective clients won't accept PDFs, just, they just want to see your CV, uh, sorry, your portfolio. So um, have your shortened version 
or your summary of a particular case study ready or downloadable somewhere from on your website. But always make sure that the long form one is there um, for everyone or for hiring managers to see. If you need to password protect it, then do so. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, you've also asked, maybe just selecting some of the projects and analyzing them. So, Ben, who got hired within 26 days, had one long form case study, but it was very specific, very detailed, and that's all he needed. But he did some other really cool things on his site as well, which you will um, learn if you join the program. These are like tips and secrets, um, what I call, um, they are triggers to help hiring managers perhaps perceive you more successful than you are, but just to give them an idea that you understand the hiring process, okay? So let's take a look. Um, do we have any more questions? See how much time we've got left. All right, so we're nearly up, but if anyone's got any more questions, we've got a couple of minutes left. All right, thanks, Gregor. Okay, so as far as I can see, um, I think that's everything. So I just want to say thank you for joining me again today. Um, this replay will be uh, available again for 24 hours. I'm going to ping you a link to it tonight if you want to watch it. It'll also be in the Portfolio Rockstars um, Facebook group. I'm just going to um, escape from this one second and ping you the link if you don't already have it. To the sales page. So if you want to take advantage of this, then please do. I'll just leave this here for you. And hopefully I will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to be covering, oh crikey, what was it tomorrow? Module three, which is, let's see. I think it's Dream Boss. So we'd all love one of those. Right. Yeah, tomorrow is Dream Boss. How to find him, where to find him or her. Also, um, let's see. Also, um, basically, how to close the void between what they want and also what you have in your portfolio. Um, we'll also be covering mind reading, how to read your boss's mind or potential boss's mind and prepare um, your superstar narrative to go with that. So I really hope you can join me tomorrow and thanks for being here tonight and thanks again for your interest and all your questions. Okay, thanks. All right, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye.